I'm Peter Neal, director of the World Ocean Observatory. We are all aware of industrial agriculture the gradual assimilation of small farms into larger tracts owned by larger corporations that have consolidated farmland ownership, transformed farmers from proprietors to employees, diminished the cultural viability and values of the family farm, and otherwise applied large-scale technologies to increase efficiency and productivity through capital-intensive technology, exponential increase in chemical fertilizers and pesticides, and in some cases the introduction of new or genetically modified species that have elicited much controversy. Industrial agriculture is dominated by fewer and fewer corporations with concentrated and dominating control of supply and distribution of such basic foods as wheat, corn, soybeans, rice, and other staples of the global diet. Historically, fishing has been artisanal and regional, mostly individuals fishing from shore or small craft in localized areas for regional consumption. We are all aware of the decline of such conditions, ground fish in New England, for example. But there are many other instances that have been persuasively documented by studies of the collapse of fish stocks in every ocean. Public awareness of this serious depletion of heretofore abundant protein has resulted in implementation of regulatory structures to control gear and problematic bycatch, define geographic areas for limited permit systems, and establish species quotas based on scientific research, administrated oversight and reporting, and independent onboard monitoring of actual harvest. It has become a complex and contentious situation almost everywhere. In the midst of these developments, fishing too has been industrialized. Beyond the number of vessels, each bigger than the one before, expansion frequently incentivized by taxes and direct subsidies evident in the ports of every nation. The situation is ever more problematic, especially now as the increased capacity is in critical contradiction to the decreased available supply. But beneath the surface of this circumstance can be found exactly the same elements that changed agriculture. Many of the individual fish boats are now part of corporate fleets with financial capacity to upgrade technology and to extend range beyond national exclusive economic zones into international unregulated waters. The number of owners of these fleets has also contracted to the point where I believe the public would be astonished to know the very small number of individuals who, through offshore entities, corporate conglomerates, flags of convenience, interlocking directorates, management contracts, other legal structures and financial instruments, political influence, and possible corruption, control the international fishing industry. A controversial example of this is the super trawler Abel Tasman, former the fishing vessel Margiris, a recently renamed and reflagged 430-foot, 9,500 gross ton suction harvest and freezer ship owned by Seafish Tasmania in partnership with Seafish Tasmania Pelagic, a wholly owned subsidiary of a Dutch company, Parvlit and Vanderplas BV, itself owned by members of two Dutch families long established in the fishing business. According to its website, that company's fishing fleet consists of 12 freezer trawlers, owns and operates multiple coal stores, trading offices, factories in its own transport, and can, quote, provide service at every point in the process from catch to delivery, unquote. The Abel Tasman can be at sea six to eight weeks, fishing, processing, and freezing small pelagic species such as jack mackerel, blue mackerel, red bait, and sardine for ultimate distribution to Africa and elsewhere. It has a special device to prohibit suction of dolphins and seals into its vacuum system. According to a January 2012 article in the New York Times, studies of jack mackerel stocks have dropped from 30 million metric tons to less than a tenth of that in two decades, resulting in the South Pacific Fisheries Management Organization to adopt binding quotas. As the proposed agreement is as yet unratified, companies in Greece, Hong Kong, and the Netherlands have rushed their mega trawlers to the endangered ground. The Australian jack mackerel quota, slightly increased even in the face of recent negative estimates, is 36,000 tons. Seafish Tasmania was awarded 17,800 tons, almost 50% of the total allocation. As you might imagine, local fishers, marine scientists, environmentalists, sustainability advocates, and Greenpeace were not happy and raised the issue with politicians who, as of now, have legislatively overridden the fisheries authority 
and the permit is on hold. Seafish is considering its legal options. The Dutch government has raised the issue with the European Union. The courts will sort this out, I suppose. But understand what is evident herein. The ascendancy of industrial over artisanal systems, expensive technology, the effect of offshore capital, the collision of conservation and consumption interests, marine species at risk of depletion or extinction, unresolved international agreement, regulatory standards and enforcement, conflicted national governance, threatened local jobs and regional economy, prospective food for Africa. The world is complicated, and the ocean is not a place apart. We will discuss these issues and more in future editions of World Ocean Radio.